This is a pamphlet for the new four-door Victoria Ford Fairlane. So if you open it up, this is what it looks like. Hey all it's Vintage Vinny and welcome to an antique mall haul. Everything I'm going to be sharing with you all came from two different places. I've got a couple of things from eBay that I've been meaning to share and then there's a gift that somebody sent to me and they bought it from a live sale and I've completely forgotten to share it and thank this person for it. I think I did in one of the live sale chats but I'm going to be thanking them again because I love it. So Sherry Lynn bought this from Sandra, the Pink Elephant Parlor, it's live sale. She had a bunch of hankies, and she thought of me when she saw this one. And I love it. I'm going to have to wash it before I use it. But I think it is going to be really, really useful, especially this time of year. So, Sherry Lynn, thank you so much again for thinking of me. And, yeah, I look forward to chatting with you in the live sale chats at some point. I hope you're doing well. And then Corey, the thrifted artist, sent her Christmas card over. I just got it today, which is the 7th of January. So I thought I'd read it out loud to you all. It says, have your elf a holly jolly Christmas. And in it, she writes, to one of my favorite thrifting friends, I hope the upcoming year brings you much joy and positivity to come. Can't wait to see what your channel brings in the months to come. Stay awesome, stay funny, keep thrifting, enjoy life. Hugs, Corey the Thrifted Artist. Oh, and it says, Mary's wishes for a wonderful Christmas. Well, Corey, I truly appreciate your kind words. And yes, I'm trying to stay awesome, stay funny, and trying to thrift as best I can, despite me acquiring quite a bit of stuff. I have a goal of trying to make this guest room just my place of just doing my live sale so that way I don't hog this place up like I have. My parents got me a really awesome desk for Christmas, which I will, of course, share with you all at some point. And I really just want to leave this room be for the live sales and not just like a junk heap, which is what I've turned this room into. So I will be sharing that with you all at some point. And hopefully I, I might be moving all of my thriftage and doing my haul videos back in my room again. So that'll be good. And keep the stuff out of here and it can just go right downstairs when I'm done with it. So this I think was like two or three dollars. It's a pinup arcade card. This is basically what we've all been doing during the uh, pandemic. We've just been eating, eating and sleeping. I'm out for a good time and a half. And she's eating a banana and showing off her legs. Very risque for the 40s. Last eBay item, I just got this today. It's the Bing Crosby with the Andrew Sisters 45 album. I think I saw Vintage and Vinyl win one of these from Moss Stone Stories um, live sale or like a live, yeah, I think it was a live sale. And I really like the color of the background. It's very, it just has a really cool color, like a mid-century color. And you got Bing's head on here, you got the snowflakes, you got the ornaments. And it cost me $5.95. I know that there's a booklet that they made. And I really just wanted this one to frame because it's thinner. And I, like I said, I really like the images of, or the graphics and the images of this. I'm never really that concerned if the LP is damaged or not because I don't really listen to records. If I want to listen to a song by one of these artists, I'll just go on YouTube and find it. So that was everything eBay-wise, friend mail-wise. So let me show you all the really fun stuff that I thrifted. This was the only thing that I picked up from the Black Rose in Hanover, PA. It cost me $14, and it's a really cool 1960s locked barware bottle set. We've got a bottle for scotch, we've got a bottle for gin, and we've got a bottle for bourbon. There is a lock on it with the key, and the caps are plastic. 
I thought it was really cool, and I did do research on it just to make sure that I, what I was paying for it was worth it, and it is. If I were to sell this, possibly I'd list it high, maybe at $75 or best offer and see where it goes. And yeah, I just think it's really, really cool. So this was a very fun item from my childhood. Oh, I should probably backtrack a little bit. After visiting the Black Rose of Hanover, I decided to go ahead and check out the Goodwill that was in that area. And uh, this is pretty much the only vintage item that I found. It's the Hefty Zoop House Cups and Lids, new and sealed, for $1.99. And comps for these are around about $17. It's brand new, never been opened. This was just a nostalgic piece for me because I remember the commercials on TV and they were annoyingly catchy, kind of like what Baby Shark is now. But, like I said, they were just a piece of nostalgia for me, and this is in a, a Goodwill store that I just cannot look anything up because the signal, or at least with my phone provider, is crap. So, I just have to take risks and go by what I know. So, $1.99 was not too bad of a risk. I mean, I can look stuff up when I go outside after I buy things, but I'm not just going to go back and forth between the stores after I find stuff. So, I just take risks and if I lose out a little bit of money oh well okay so everything that we're gonna be looking at now came from the Emmitsburg Antique Mall in Emmitsburg Maryland I spent $25.18 and that's including tax it took me quite a while to find some things because either a the stuff that I wanted was priced exactly where it should be or it was priced way over what it should be but that's how it is at an antique mall, but there are still deals to be found if you look hard enough. So this came out of a booth that was 75% off. I think it's a soap dish. I just really, really liked the colors of it. And you all know I have a beach themed room. So if I ever want to change out something, I can definitely do so. There is a tiny speck of a sticker still on there. But it was definitely worth the $2.50 I spent. Because I have one of these, not this one specifically, but one in my room already. This one's a little bit smaller, but I still think it would make a great display piece. So this was half off. This was $7. It's a Sessions teapot clock. I believe it was originally black at one point because you've got a big old speck of black paint right there. However, I like it the way it is. By the way, this is plastic, and this is glass. And it does work. But usually what I would do with these is I would take a, like one big wall in, in a kitchen when I get my own place, and I will just hang a bunch of them all together. Typically I go for the metal ones, but if I can find the plastic ones and they are a good, decent price, I will pick it up. In this case it was at $7. So this piece, I believe, was the first item that I was able to pick up. This was $1.25. It's the care and use of electrical appliances in the home, and I believe this is made by Westinghouse. I really like the image of the pretty lady on the front. And, oh, I was wrong. It's, I don't know what year I said it was from, but it's from 1942 from Westinghouse. And there's just some fun stuff in here. I mean... I like that image of the vintage fridge. There's not a lot of really great graphics in here, but I still think it's kind of cool. And what I might do is I might put this in a live sale if I'm not really interested in keeping it, which I may end up doing. I'm not sure yet. But yeah, that was only a buck 25, and I thought that that was really well worth it. I got a copy of a March 1948 Woman's Day magazine. Look how much they cost back in the day, five cents. And it was only $3. I always, if I'm able to, will look inside these magazines before I purchase them because I wanna make sure that what I'm buying is worth it. And I gotta say, there's some pretty decent stuff in here. Like for instance, this three in one meal and one, two, three, um, I guess it's a canning advertisement, along with something for what it takes to be a model mom. 
I know it's hard for me to share some of this stuff because it's just... Because it's hard to share because of the angle of the camera, but I love the images in here. They just, they don't compare to what they're, how we, I can't talk. The images and the graphics in these magazines do not compare to what we are able to do today. Like this just, I feel like took a lot more time to do and, you know, as opposed to how it is now. But yeah, definitely works of art in these magazines. And the last lot of items we're going to be looking at is a box of ephemera. I paid $10 for it, and there is some pretty neat stuff in here. So let's take a look. The first piece of ephemera we're going to be looking at is this really awesome Ford Times magazine. It's from 1974. Normally I don't really go for 70s ephemera, but sometimes the content is just too cool to pass by. So this is a picture of Bennett Bidwell, who was the vice president and general manager of the Ford division. What really attracted me to it was the, here we go, you get a little side view of different cars. This is for a two-door. So this is a Brougham four-door. So we've got that, we've got this. There's some other cool ones in here. Ford Elite, we've got the Ford Granada, Ford Mustang the second. So that's really, really cool. This is a pamphlet for the new four-door Victoria Ford Fairlane. So if you open it up, this is what it looks like. And if you open it up all the way, this is what it looks like on the inside. Got a pamphlet for the Ford Galaxy Thunderbird Elegance. Just look at these graphics. This is from 1958 from the Ford Motor Company. I mean, you just don't get any better than that. I mean, I could go through these for hours. And just look at those graphics. Look at the brides. I mean, and look at that color. I mean, there's so much to these magazines, it's, it's overwhelming. If I'm going a little fast, I apologize, but I don't want to take up too much time because there's a lot of ephemera to get through. So, that is really cool. This is a pamphlet for the 1954 Mercury. So, if you unfold it, this is what it looks like. And if we unfold it again, this is what the inside looks like. And this is what it looks like when you completely unfold the pamphlet. I apologize, I couldn't film this on the table. Let's quickly take a quick glance at everything that's in here. I mean, like I said, this kind of craftsmanship and art is bygone in an era where I feel like we took pride in what we made and we appreciated quality over quantity. This is a really cool booklet. It's a profile guide for the introduction to the Ford Motor Company. It's from 1956. Let's go ahead and open it up and look at it, shall we? Looks like we got a Norman Rockwell picture here. Got a family just outside with one of their cars. Look at that. Showcasing all of the cool cars. I love that one. We got the Ford Fairlane. The Thunderbird. There's a station wagon. I think that's a station wagon. And come to find out, two doors are more valuable than the four door. We got the Mercury. Some more awesome images here. Again, I apologize if we're going fast, but that's just what happens when you have a lot of ephemera to share.
Now that is one cool booklet. I believe I have two of these, Lionel Super O directions, but again, look at the graphics in here. I might have a hard time letting these go, because these, I'm not a train person, but oh my gosh. These are absolutely fantastic. So I've got two of these. I'm not going to flip through this one, because this one has a lot more content in it. But you get the picture. This is a Ford Rotonda book, probably from the mid-50s. It's even got a map of the Rouge and Industrial City, which I think is really, really cool. And judging by this timeline that's at the back of the book, I assume this is from 1953 for the 50th anniversary of the Ford Motor Company. Now this doesn't have anything really interesting in it. It's for the 1968 Thunderbird. It's the owner's manual. It's got some water damage on it. I haven't done any research on this stuff, so we will see what it may bring. And if it doesn't go for a whole lot of money, I'll just put it in a live sale for a few dollars. We've got another train manual for AHM, Fidelity e Economy Quality. This was printed in Italy, and again, the images are just fantastic, but I'm not much of a train person, so I will be looking this up just to see what it goes for, and if it doesn't go for much, I'll lot it together with some of the other ones you all are going to see. So we got that one. We've got a pamphlet for the 1957 Mercury. So here is the front. If we open it up, this is what it looks like. And this is what it looks like when it's completely unfolded. Like I said, just fantastic photos and graphics. It just doesn't get any better than this. And it looks like they're advertising the Montclair series the Monterey series, and the station wagons. We got another one of these. I don't have to go through it because we already looked at some of the pages. We got a Lionel 027 Super O HO model. Now this one's a little bit more fragile. As you can see, it's kind of tearing, so I'm going to be a little careful when I open this up. Look at that. Pardon the glare. And again, I do apologize if I went a little too fast going through these, but there are just so many cool things to look at in these. And heck, if I don't keep them, they will be sold. Oh, see, it's already coming apart more than I expected. Uh, it looks like somebody wrote 1940 on here, so maybe that's when this is from. We've got Lionel from 1957. See, this is the kind of stuff that, you know, you may not really be all that interested in, but when you start looking at some of it, it's like, oh my gosh, I could have a field day going through this stuff, and I, I'm having a field day going through it with you all right now. But yeah, totally awesome. Now this is Pacific Fast Mail, and it is from 1967. How do I know that? Because the price list was inside the pamphlet. In my opinion, the images in this pamphlet are not as great. And it looks like some of the pages have come loose, too. But that's okay, because, I mean, it's 54 years old, and for it to be in the condition it's in is remarkable. And I think these aren't even the right pages. This is page 26. This is page 3. But that's okay. I'm sure if I lot it together with some of the other things, it will still sell. And the last item in this ephemera lot is this 1977 book about cars from 1957. So it's a dramatic review of one of the most innovative and exciting years in automotive history. So basically what it is, is it goes through the cars, the styles and the parts and things like that. Now personally, not that I dislike this, but because it's from the 70s, it's just not up my alley so I will look this up and see if it goes for anything and if it doesn't I'll put it in a live sale I'm sure somebody's out there's gonna want this 
So that is everything that I wanted to share with you all. Let me know in the comments below, what was your favorite item that I So that's all I have for you today. Be sure and give this video a big thumbs up, leave a comment below, subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure and click the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to get notified when new videos are uploaded. Be sure and check me out on Instagram, the link to it is down below as well, where you will see pictures of items to come in future haul videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye guys!